Well, good morning, guys. Wandering Beast out here, and it is a cold, single digit Fahrenheit chilly week here in Central Oregon. What I wanted to accomplish today with kind of an impromptu video, I'm doing it old school. You guys are literally sitting on the cooler, the ice coat cooler, propped up on a few things, so you're somewhat level. I've got the diesel heater running in the background. It is at 4 hertz. I ran it all day yesterday to kind of warm up the space to take the chill off this bus to help warm up the battery cells because if you don't know, battery management systems or the BMS will cut off any sort of incoming power so you can't charge your batteries when it's that cold. It will let you take a little bit of power out so I can still fire up the diesel heater. I know it's not great, but I do it on a regular basis. Um, and that's kind of my emergency system. Um, again, I've got crap everywhere. Forgive this sort of impromptu, no tripod video today, guys. But the story started yesterday when I was doing that, and I talked to a friend of mine here in Central Oregon, and he was like, bro, my house, the heater totally went out on us. It's single digits here, guys. Water pipes start freezing, everything starts going down in this sort of temperatures. This is not great conditions. And I, I flippantly kind of replied back to him, I'm like, hey, at least we have these overland, bug out, bus, whatever you want to call it, you know, vehicles that we built out to endure crazy environments and conditions. You know, if my house turns into a solid block of ice, I know that my family's gonna come out here to the bus, we're gonna make some dinner, we're gonna start the heater up and we're gonna play cards and we're gonna go sleep in a cozy environment. And I'm not worried about what happens to the house if everything leaks and blah, blah, blah. Um, it is my emergency backup, really. My bug out vehicle, whatever you want to call it. Overland vehicles, campings, I don't need anything. Everything I have is on this bus. So I mentioned that to him. I'm like, hey, at least we still have this stuff, right? Well, he doesn't. His batteries are in an external compartment. They are a solid block of ice right now. They won't take a charge. And his battery warmers he ordered a long time ago are stuck in this holiday mess that a lot of you guys are probably dealing with. So what I wanted to find out is last February, I put on the silicone heating pads onto my batteries. So 17, 19 on the middle cells. Outside cells still kind of at nine. Slowly creeping up, but I really like where this is going. And I never wired them, never got around to it. Didn't have time before a trip to the coast. So. I usually come out here and I fire up the diesel heater. I'm trying to get the water system squared away. I'm working on some TIG welding to finish the furniture in here. And I just kind of want to warm up the space. Bring the battery cells up to a temperature. They'll start taking a charge. Anything above freezing, really. And fired it off 12 hours later. It's still cooking. It's like 60 degrees in here. It's 4 degrees outside. And the batteries are warmed up. They're taking a charge. I didn't really measure how long that took. And so today, I'm going to do a little bit slightly more scientific but what I wanted to see is I've got two batteries back here one I'm gonna plug in the Victron as a 12 volt power supply and the other one is just gonna stay plain Jane it's gonna take whatever heat this heaters kicking out it's gonna take most of the day to get up to temperature and the other one I'm gonna plug into 12 volts and we're gonna use those heater pads and see how quickly those cells come up I realize this probably isn't the most exciting video for a lot of you guys but this is the sort of geeked out experimenting I want to know. I want to know when it's four degrees outside and my house turns to a block of ice, we can all run out here, I can fire the heater up, the batteries will come up, I can start charging with the solar, I can charge with something else, even if I'm plugged into the house, I want to know. So that's what we're doing today. Stay tuned, let's, let's, let's try it. All right guys, the beautiful thing about the Victron charger is you can run it as a 12 volt power supply. So right now you're seeing it is 12.8 volts and I can adjust that if I need to. And it is drawing two and a half amps of current, just alligator clipped on the little silicone pads that I have on the battery cells. I'll try to put in some photos so you can see what it looks like before I built this battery case over here. All right, the time is just before noon. All right, as a point of reference, it looks like alpha is negative four Celsius, which I, I believe negative five is my cutoff on the BMS not to allow any power coming out. So I'm pretty close to my cutoff limit here. We're drawing just over an amp, the heater's already fired up. And this is gonna be our control. All right, this is beta. And we are at 0.5. I'll double check my cold cutoff here. 
um, but those heating cells should be working and we will come back here shortly after I answer my wife's call. All right, this is Alpha. It is 1.46. It's not been quite two hours. I got busy. I was going to check it in an hour. Um, we are exactly at zero. So that one would start taking a charge here pretty soon. Let's check on beta. Well, beta is up to 3.7 degrees. So we'll come back in a couple hours and check and see. This is still just pulling two and a half amps. But this is only for one battery cell. So obviously if we were going to run both, that would be a 5 amp draw until these could start pulling in power. Alright guys, let's kind of wrap up this weird little experiment. It, I realize it's going to be a fairly dry video for a lot of you guys. If some of you are curious and you're building your own systems, maybe you'll get something out of this. I'm just going to kind of share my experience. Um, it is a comfortable 61 degrees inside the bus. The diesel heater is still kicking out at 4 hertz and it has also gone up to 29 outside. We are on the cusp of a warming trend. In fact, it's supposed to be raining at Christmas, which does not bring me joy. But talking about the battery cells, so it's very comfortable inside here. Alpha, who had no external power, just warming up out here. Again, those cells are very dense. That's why they have all the power that they do. So it takes a while to get those warmed up. However, it's still at 1.7 Celsius. That's just above freezing. Not really super happy, but at this point, you could probably start bringing in a little bit of power. For the heating pads, we were up to over seven Celsius, seven and a half Celsius for beta, that cell, that we had the warming pads turned on, taking two and a half amps for the last couple hours um, to keep those going. However, that converts to almost 44, 45 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty comfortable. That's a warm, happy battery that you can start pushing power back in, whether it's solar or driving down the road. Um, you know, those dense cells need a little bit of love. And so that's kind of what we're going to do. I'm going to set it up with the thermostat switch so that when it drops below a certain degree, it'll kick that heating pad on. It gets to a certain threshold and it'll turn off. And it'll keep it that in that happy range and utilizing the power that are in the lithium cells. These things hold a ton of power, as I mentioned. Uh, there's also some things we're going to be working on down the road for the water system itself. I do have heating pads also. If you guys have been following the channel, you know that I do a lot of winter time adventures. So when I'm out there, I want the water tank to be full and ready to go and ready to rock. When I have a week of single digit temperatures and I'm not out here adventuring, this bus sits here in the driveway on the property and I want it to be able to control and keep everything happy without draining it and winterizing it because I want to be able to use it when I want to use it. So the tank is going to have a heating pad. I'm looking to put in a heating pad on the pump itself as well as especially my water filters. And those are on a set thermostat. Again, when it starts getting below freezing, they will kick on. They'll get to a certain temp. That may mean that I'm drinking slightly warm water. I haven't tested it out yet, but hopefully it keeps everything from freezing, especially my water filters. I don't want that system to freeze, but I don't want to have to winterize it because whether it's an emergency or an adventure, I want to be able to jump on the bus and just leave. That's kind of where we're at. Well, I hope you guys found some sort of information and, and I don't know, enjoyed it a little bit. Um, this is just kind of uh, my thought process, a little bit of free form, extremely dry video about power and heating up your lithium homemade DIY cells, as well as some of the future products projects that we have going on here in the water system. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and we'll see you down the road. Thanks for all the love and support. You guys are amazing. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the adventure on social media and we'll see you on the road.